What's up, guys? Welcome to the Sports Podcast. Uh, my name is Mukhan. This is Ilias. And this is our new podcast, uh, slash YouTube Sports Talk. We're going to be going over a bunch of sports, um, mainly just hockey and soccer, though, just because that's because the ones that we're most comfortable with. Um, and let's just get started right away. There's a lot of stuff happening in the NHL, so today we're just going to be focusing strictly on the NHL. Um, and FYI, if you don't know, uh, we're big Leaf fans, so um, yeah, I'm sorry to all the haters, but this is a Leaf discussion talk right now. Um, let's just start right away um, with all the Leaf signings and everything they've done this off season and what we think of it. So I'm just going to read you the list of signings they've made. Um, I might be missing some, so, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, pu- I'll pull some. I'll pull them up. Yeah. Okay, so. If you miss any of them. Okay. So, off the top of my head, we got TJ Brody. We got Wayne Simmons. We got, um, I'm forgetting. Bogosian. 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 Yeah, Zach Bogosian, but also Boyd. I forgot his first yeah, name. Yeah, Boyd. Travis Boyd. Travis Boyd. Two, two, ja- two uh, Travis's. Now. Well, Travis, hey, Travis Sermon's not under contract right now, so. One, yeah, one Travis so far. Uh, two Andersons. <laughs> two Andersons. And, oh, and then they've also made the trade for um, Anderson, as well as the Kapanen trade, which got us Amarov. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, Amarov. the pick, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's just like break that all down. So before – oh, and they re-signed Jason Spezzo. We can't forget about that. Yeah. But let's just talk about what has happened. When the Leafs got eliminated this August um, – we were both extremely upset, to say the least. And mm-hmm. it was more of an upset that we knew that they weren't good enough. Because before, when they lost to Boston, it was a different upset. It was upset that we were thinking, okay, we were right there. You know, you could have won. Back-to-back game seven. So. Yeah, like, maybe the first one, we deserved to lose that series for sure. But the second yeah, time... we already we, talked about that. Yeah, but the second time, we kind of deserved to win that. And... Mm-hmm. The Washington series, you know, we were like a rookie team. Young. Yeah. Like, regardless of what happened, we were still happy. Like, yeah. It's made the playoffs, rookies, all that. Exactly. Even the 2013 series, you know, that was a young team. Like, if you're looking back at it right now, they're not, they weren't an experienced team. That was the first time the Leafs made the playoffs that year in like whatever he Nine years. Yeah. 10 years, something like that. So, you can't be too mad at that. But there's a different level of mad when they lose against Boston in 2018, 2019. And they lose against Columbus in 2020. Because the 2018, 2019 one was like, this team is right there. This team was winning the whole series. You deserve to go on. How could you screw We're that up? Up three times in the series as well. Game six. Like, you have yeah. to win that. Like, you have to win that. That's a, that, that's, a, that, <laughs> that's the upset we were feeling. This upset, though, with Columbus was completely different. We were both... We just knew we were not good enough. You know, this is a season where you're coming off losing to a Zamboni driver, essentially. And I know... Well, like, me- Mediocre, like half the season. Like yeah, like you're not spe- like okay. Be honest. How many times does the eighth seed go on to do something in the playoffs? Not often at all. So we weren't shocked that they got eliminated. We were just upset that this team with so much potential the previous years has done nothing with it. Yeah, like we have to see some change. Like it's like game seven, game seven, game five. Like you have to win. Yeah, like, you exactly. have to win one of those to show that you've changed, improved. Yeah, and so at that point, I looked over the team. And the easy answer was to say, okay, this team sucks on defense and they have no toughness. And that's essentially yeah, right. Yeah. But like if you're going more, more Yeah, but if you're going more specific into it, I mean, this was brought up by Steve Dangle. The Leafs need to find Morgan Riley a defensive partner. And this was the list of his defensive partners before. Dion Phaneuf, Ron Hainsey, Martin Marinson, Cody CC, and Nikita Zaitsev. Briefly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, out of all those, like, he has not played with a legitimate guy in a long time. In a mm-hmm. long time. Okay? Like, literally... Who was that long time, though? Probably really probably going back one. probably going back to Team North America. That was the last time I think he played with someone proper. Like, this guy, he <laughs> he hasn't played with someone, like, his level on the Leafs. Arguably, the, arguably, arguably the best one was 16, 17, Nikita Zaitsev. Yeah, and that's not a high bar. That's sad <laughs> that that was the that was okay. Nikita Zaitsev that season had a great season for sure. Yeah, but come on, that's not going to win you the Stanley Cup. So after that, I we both actually did a kind of like a like reevaluation on the Leafs and trying to see what we need and what we have. 
Yeah. If you're looking at it, we both had Wayne Simmons down as someone we wanted for a long time. Wayne Simmons has been caught our eye for a long time because this team, this team did not care whatever happened. They were literally so easy to walk on. People would mm-hmm. be running over Anderson. Nobody cared. Everyone was going back to the bench. They need someone to actually like care. No one cared. And I think Wayne Simmons brings that above like just the toughness and grit. He like he brings the energy. He brings yeah. the goal scoring. He brings the toughness. Exactly, and he's one of those. It's veterans. Like everything we need. Exactly, he's one of those veterans that's always on his game. And during the Leafs this season, they were daydreaming so often. They were Especially daydreaming those, through games. And some of the playoff games, like Kapanen, like you, you could see it. Yeah, you, know? you could see like. With Kasperi Kavan, that was interesting because he had two different sides to him, right? He had that side yeah. where he would be like the energy guy. He would be hitting, fighting, and with his speed, scoring. Like, it was beautiful. But then, majority of the time, he was the guy who was just like daydreaming through games. Like, like lazy back check, lazy forward check. Nothing mm-hmm. too interesting. And he had that one move where he would just like skate really fast and stop and then had no idea what to do with the puck after that. Exactly. So that's, that was Kasperi Kavan on the Leafs as a nutshell. But... Now, with that being said, we made the roster, and I'm being serious. Kyle Dubas did a great job this offseason, in my opinion, because he's kind of done exactly what I needed to see from him for a good team. You know, TJ mm-hmm. Brody, finally a defensive partner with Morgan Riley. Thank you so much. And he so can much. actually play, like, proper defense. Like, when we got Tyson Berry, like, it was a decent trade and all, but, like, if he's not going to play solid defensively, like, exactly. it doesn't... We already have our number one offense. Exactly. TJ Brody gets stops. Is he's like a muzzin, pretty much. He's top 10 in the league for not giving the puck away in his own end. Top 10. He's number 9 in the league. You saw? You checked? Yeah. That's that's a stat that they keep track of. Giving the puck away in your own end is a stat they keep track of. And TJ Brody is top 10. That is exactly what the Leafs need. They gave the puck away so much. and It hurt my brain. It really hurt my brain to see it so many times. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think TJ Brody is beautiful to be on the Leafs. But then they kind of need that one guy. That one. I mean, adding... Wayne Simmons is great, but mm-hmm. I mean the Leafs have always done that. They've had one like great guy, one tough like guy, and like Clifford Martin. They've had Clifford one season, Martin another season. I mean David Clarkson even another season. Like those are just one guy that was what you're sh- you're trying to like carry the team with like toughness on one we guy. We need Colton Orr and like uh, Fraser McLaren. Like you need like you need not even that. You know those are just fighters, but like you just need someone yeah, to like start like hitting. Like like Mark yeah. Fraser. I know he like this is one no one talked about, but. What he brought to that Leafs team in 2013 was so special. Literally, you knew that you could not run over the Leafs. You came into town, you wanted to win, you were gonna have to get some bruises for it. And it was Martin Marinson, or, sorry, Mark Frazier, um, not Martin Marinson, Mark Frazier, uh, Colton Moore, Fraser McLaren, all those guys. But you needed that one more tough guy on defense that could even be on your third pairing. And I think Zach Bogosian is so underrated for that. I think he, that was a great signing by the Leafs. He just won the cup. He played well. Exactly. This guy knows how to win. He played, yeah. This guy knows how to win. He's someone that's sick of his teammates. And above anything... He's been in the league for like a while. Yeah, and above anything else, I think, I'm think i just curious to see how Wayne Simmons and Zach Bogosian and now um, even Jake Muzzin and all those... It's Jason Spezza. All those guys affect like Mitch Marner and the young guys. Because they never... They were... They did not throw their body around at all. Austin Matthews, I saw it a bit more this season, but Mitch Marner. I mean, this guy went from in the juniors. If you watched him, he threw around his body. He wasn't just he was the Nazem Kadri. He knew how to score. He knew how to pass, and he hit. And then he came to the Leafs and he stopped. You know, mm-hmm. and I think it'll be curious to see Wayne Simmons and all those veterans kind of like impact. Yeah, on the team. Yeah, see what they do to Mitch Marner, and I think yeah. that that will be really cool to see. Um, so I love that signing. I think our defense has gotten so much better. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, we've also signed, re-signed Dennis Mulligan. Um, and I love the Jason Spezza signing as well. That's someone who needed yeah. to be back on the Leafs. He exactly. needed to we be saw, We saw it in Game 5. Without that fight, you don't know. Like, yeah. It brought momentum throughout the game. It would hurt me if he was not a Leaf right now. Or if he yeah. was not even playing. That would be even worse. Perfect, this guy cannot... Presence. Yeah, he can't leave his season like that. Cares about the game, you know? Yeah. Also, Wayne Simmons, I saw um, it was like two days ago. He was on TSN and he did an interview. And he, this is quote unquote what he said. He said, Wayne Simmons on joining the Leafs. He said, I can play the game, but at the same time, I can punch your head off if need be. Anything happens to the boys, I'll be the first to jump in. Tell me you don't love that. Tell me you don't love that. Did you hear that or not? Yeah, I did. That was amazing. And also, 
that is exactly the type of player that everyone has been begging for, right? Everyone has been begging Dubas for. And this was really, people were describing a match made in heaven. Like, honestly, this was such a good signing. It's everything you needed. Everything you needed. Of course, you know, he, he might not be the Wayne Simmons of before, you know, the 30 goal scorer, uh, kind of top six forward, but come on. Yeah. I mean, on our guy, team, we have a good offense. This brings the veteran presence, the grit that we need. I mean, and he can still chip in 15, 20 goals. Like, yeah, on your bottom six, he's hitting 20 goals. Come on. Come on. That's great. For one, one year, one and a half mil, and he's literally changing the grit. I mean, the bottom six were so horrendous in that Columbus series. It was embarrassing. We had one line, one line of forwards. And that's embarrassing when we have so, when offense is literally what this team is built off of. So I think bringing a guy on like Simmons, that really helps your bottom six. And you can have more than one line, hopefully. Like, that was literally one of the bigger issues with them. But, I mean, I'm looking at this team um, right now, and it's looking really good. I'm not going to lie to you. It's looking... <sighs> Listen... People who are just watching us, this is, again, our first video on YouTube. Hi, whatever. We are not the typical Leaf fans that you see. And I know that sounds stupid because you could hear any Leaf fan say that. But we're not like that. We are literally so tough on this team. At the start of last season, we both said that this team is not making the playoffs. We weren't one of those guys planning the parade. No, we weren't planning any parade. Oh, like, oh. I mean, I personally thought that... The Tyson Berry, um, Nazem Kadri trade was good at the time. That's what I thought, but I still knew this team was not good enough, and I didn't even think they were going to make the playoffs. We said we were like we wouldn't be surprised at all if they missed the playoffs. No, and I mean I don't know if you counted as missing the playoffs, but this is kind of like yeah. the little gray area. Yeah, that's where they How were at. That thing, that thing at the start of the season where they say like, um, oh, which team has the highest odds? I think like the Leafs were on there. We're like like as the highest yeah. one or one of the highest. No, it was, like, that's not going to happen. No, it was not like that. So, we're very tough on this team. But, I mean, right now, if... Listen, on paper, right now, if everything plays out, where are the holes on this team? Because you got the defense right now that I'm looking at, and that looks like an above-average defense. You got Riley um, Brody. You got Muzzin, Muzzin, whoever you want to fill in, Hall, Dermont, um Whoever you want there. Sandine. Yeah, Sandine. I don't know if he'll play. I don't know if a top forward. Even Miko Lettinen, people are putting him in the top four, right? Yeah, I saw. Zach Bogosian could play there. And then on your third line, take your pick of those guys again. You got Durman, Sandine, Lilgren on that side. And then you have Bogosian, whatever you want on the other side, right? That That looks like a better. That looks like an above average, in my opinion, defensive core. Do you agree? I agree. We just got to see how they play. And then now you're looking at your top six. Your top six, come on. You're paying a lot of money for it, but look at the look at those names. Matthews, so, Marner, Nylander, Tavares. Yeah, like, And you on. got Mackay and Hyman. Yeah, you got Mackay and Hyman, solid. which is kind of like... Them, yeah, but, like, come on. That is a top... That is, uh, like, that is top of the league, top, top of the league, top six. Team. Yeah. And then... You got your bottom six, which has been a big discussion, big discussion, and lots of people have been like, last year it wasn't good enough. But I mean, Wayne Simmons. Now, it was good enough offensively, but like grit and like caring. Wise, even offensively, there was no like in the Columbus series, there was no threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, if you have, well, Kapan and Janssen were like solid, but they just didn't play good enough. Well, and I mean, Janssen, Janssen played injured. one game. Yeah, yeah, he was injured. Well, Kapan. And- I mean, so look at it now. You got Simmons, Spezza, Robinson, Kerfoot, um, Engvall. Engvall. I hear Josh Anderson is. I haven't seen him play, um, or not that I remember, but I hear he could be a Zach type of guy. I think he tweeted it himself saying, you know, that's the type of player I'm trying to be. I mean. Wait, wait not Josh Anderson. Josh that's Anderson. A, what did I say? No, that's. The, no, this, you said Josh Anderson. That's the Montreal guy. Oh, what's, yeah. his, what's his first name? I don't even... Uh, Travis. No, not Travis. That's Travis Boyd. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name again? <laughs> Let me check. This is how you know we haven't seen him play, because we have no clue what his name is. Um, uh, and we, we actually know a lot about hockey. Like we the, Yes, we do, but I, I we don't know his name. Um, Joey Anderson. Joey Anderson. I knew it was a J. Anyway, Joey Anderson, He's. I saw his t- him tweeting about it. He's saying, I'm a Zach-type, Hyman-type of guy. 
That's beautiful on your on, on your bottom six. I mean, you can't. We've been saying it for years. You can't have enough Zach Hyman's on this team. He literally comes in every day, works hard. One of the most underrated players in the league. Like and for I think for sure. And I think right now, it's tough to find a hole with the Leafs. I think watch out for the Leafs because I think they can do damage this year. I don't think the job is done because first mm-hmm. of all, we have lots of players to sign, and you're gonna have to make some trades uh, to sign those players. But I think right now, so far this off season. We're, he's building a good enough team to, mm-hmm. to to contend. And I don't think we'll. Hear I don't a lot say that lightly, too. We don't say that lightly. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't think we'll see a lot of Leaf fans this year, like saying, "Oh, plan the parade," because they've seen like what's going on the last couple of years. They're gonna like tone it down. I don't know about that, man. Leaf fans. We got <laughs> also, some. I was gonna say. Unfortunately, we have some bandwagon people on this team. Seen, yeah, we do, and we've seen a lot of like delusional Leaf fans. Like, for example, um, Leafs Washington game one on uh, Maple Leaf Square, we're up two nothing. These guys are like, oh, oh, he's terrible, oh, he's terrible. Like, Kobe, what are you doing? Like, they're down two nothing. Yeah. And we we literally said, like, guys, come on, we know this team. Like, yeah, we're it's... young. T- like, you gotta, you gotta, you know. Yeah. And so, what ended up happening that game? Like, and then they they lost that game too. We were at Maple Leaf Square. So we're watching, and like, you can't rush that, you know. No, you, you can't, can't. Like, and I think right now, if Matthews has the season he had last year, and that's a big if, because he was, if you watched him, I think he was top five in the league last year. If he can do that again, Marner get back on his game. If Marner gets back on his game, I think Tavares will as well. Nylander have the same type of season. That was an amazing season. Watch out for this team, guys. Watch out. That's all I'm going to say. Watch out. 